Hi, Laura here from the Irish Spy team. And today we are joined by Martin Maloney, aka Eddie Durkin from the Hardy Bucks. And he'll be answering all your questions about the show and the possibility of a future series coming soon. So make sure you stay tuned. So the first question we have is which character on the Hardy Bucks would laugh the most when filming a scene? Don't know. Um I don't know. That's a good question. Got to the stage where it was there was it, things were just so funny that you kind of were, were thinking, is this even funny anymore? You just got so used to laughing. But there was one it was personally speaking, the most I've ever laughed is when Uncle Mick came on the very first day when we were filming the foamy nights and uh, we'd asked him to come along. And before he would got involved, before RTE came and, and the barley and the money was there, we showed him the, the old Bebo episodes. And we were watching intently to see how, how he would react. And at the end of it, he was like, hmm, that's comedy, is it? But then when Archie got involved, he was like, oh, I'll do a bit. But I was, it was just so funny to see him throw himself into the character that I couldn't stop. I, I think it was, I did like cut about 15 times because I couldn't stop laughing. But um, yeah, myself and Owen would probably do the most laughing. Depends, all depends. It was depends. good crack. The crack was good. Yeah. And what, what would you say is your favorite scene out of all the Hardy Bucks episodes? What's the one that kind of stuck with you? And that, that's your that's your favorite scene. Probably stateside and Brian Kennedy when yeah. uh, Terry Durkin came over and that, that episode, the oxygen episode and the the Castle Con, probably two of my favorite episodes of all time. But definitely the bit yeah. with uh, stateside when, when they walk into the into the house, like it was like being punched. By a fart. So, uh, and fair play to Brian Kennedy, he was a great sport as well. Just being yeah. twerked by a state side. Apart from the Hardy Bucks, what would you say is your favorite Irish TV show? Ear to the Ground. Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, comedy wise, probably Father Ted. And uh, just for the laughs, prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ashen face, doom peddlers. I don't know. I, I haven't. I couldn't bring myself around to watching RTE anymore. Just can't yeah. do it. All those people are getting so much money for doing so little. Handy, <laughs> know, handy corporate numbers. I want yeah, one of them. I know. But I don't um, know. I, I've, I've kind of. Like, I don't really watch much TV these days, to be honest with you. Oh. Spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos. So Hardy Bucks started out as a YouTube series and reached huge success with a movie now on Netflix. Was there a moment that you kind of realized like you and the lads were really on to something here between starting out on YouTube and getting to the point where you are at now, where it's one of the most iconic Irish TV shows? Like, was there a moment where you were kind of like, oh, we're really on to something here? Yeah, there was a few moments. I remember when we did the first series and it was all in the bag, kind of having a panic attack. Well, it was also up at the Rory Gala Festival for three days drinking. But on the way back mm. from Rory Gala Festival thinking, oh shit, there's no going back now. We're going on TV. But um, it, it was always kind of like at stages of success. We're like, okay, we're going on to the next level now. And um, yeah, there was, a lot, there was a lot of ups and downs along the way. And you're like, oh, we're going to make it this time. And then things happened. And uh, yeah, we were supposed to be doing a, a sequel for uh, Universal, but then I ended up having a fight with some bouncers, and that was the end of that. The investor <laughs> shit the bed like Amber Heard. <laughs> Not Amber Heard. Controversial, um, yeah. Very controversial. Uh, what is but... it? No, it's not. No, it's not. Definitely not. She was totally in the wrong, and Johnny Depp came out on top. Thank God. I know people who, who uh, know Johnny Depp personally and say he's a really nice guy. And these lads I know, Cronin, big shout out to Johnny and Mick. They um, they said he's a really good guy. So if they yeah. think he's sound, then I'll take their word for it. Yeah, he's sound he's really out. He just wants to play music and drink pint, mega pints of wine. Every episode of the Hardy Box has hilarious storylines and one-liners. How long would you say, and I know it'll totally depend on the episode, but how long would you say it took from having the concept and bringing it to light, writing the whole episode and being happy with it. Um, is that how long would each episode take or how long would a series take? 
Uh, no, how long would it both. take? I'll give you both. Yeah, give me both. So the, uh, the series from development, when you speak to the executive producers and RTE, and then we'll go off and do the first draft of the six episodes with a story arc um, between the three of us, me, Mike, and Chris, that's, that would probably take about two or three months in the, in the writing, then a redraft. And then we do a few read throughs for about a week or maybe longer. Depend. It was, we, we kind of did things differently for each series. Um, but I'd say your average episode would take about a week and a half, but they would be filmed at different stages. So you could be doing episode one halfway through the series, just depending on what locations and cast were available. Um, yeah. But I'd say all in all, a series would have took about eight months from, or maybe eight months to a year from pre-production scripting to editing and post-production. So about yeah. eight months. You'd have a yeah. baby in that time, hey. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Not far off it. Uh, so a lot of people might know this about you, but uh, at the moment you're living in Sweden. What would you mm -hmm. say is the one thing that you miss most about living in Ireland? Uh, I, I miss the crack. You know, the, uh, the fact that you don't need you don't need to explain yourself when you're speaking to people from Ireland because they they just get the the tone of what you're trying to say. Whereas, yeah. um, you know, you kind of have to spell things out. Well, depending on who you're talking to, there's a lot. There's a lot of Irish people, or there's a lot of Swedish people I know who are very well acquainted with Irish culture, and yeah. you know, you don't need to explain to them. But uh, I don't know. I, I just miss my family, friends, and just having nice conversations with randomers. Westport, Galway, Pints in Dublin. You know, yeah. uh, there's a lot I miss. Um, a, a lot I miss about home. It's, it's uh, th things are a lot easier in Ireland. You just kind of People, people understand you. I used to, I used to deliberately go and do stand-up comedy over here without any script. Get up and do ten minutes of talking in front of a crowd, and if I bombed, then I'd be like, "Grand." And then I come and do a, a comedy show in Ireland, and it felt great. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't bother doing any comedy here because it's just kind of shy crack, you know. Like most people I see who are like expats, for want of a better expression. They just end up having to compare Swedish culture to Irish culture. So um, Irish, I'm not getting paid for it, Laura, so I won't fucking bother. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. Unless I stuck at uh, it, but you... I just, uh, yeah, you know, I've got kids and uh, just don't get the time. So mm. that's it. Would you consider doing uh, a comedy tour in Ireland in the future? Absolutely, yeah, I, I would. But um, I don't know. It's, it's, um, I've just got to kind of get, I suppose I've kind of lost interest in recent years. It, you know, unless someone offers me something, then I'll do it. But I, I don't know, it's, um, you get a bit, you get a bit tired afterwards because there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of chat. And then, I mean, there's been a, a lot of different projects that have nearly come to pass, but haven't. But if, if, if I could find, a, a, you know, people who are good at getting things done, I definitely, I definitely uh, like to start writing something new. So if you know any investors, yeah. send them on. You got me details. Yeah. But I would, I would like to. It's been, it's been, been a good few years now. Like I haven't been home for two and a half years, so I've kind of mm. been out of the. You know, I was, I was out on Sunday night, and there was a lad from Tulsk called Martin who delivered a Coca Cola truck, a truck full of Coca Cola, because in Balana is the only place where they make concentrated Coca Cola and they deliver it all over, all over Europe. And this lad comes up and he's like. No, it's not you, is it? It can't be. I'm like, huh? And he's like, are you Eddie Durkin? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what, what are you doing over here? So like when people see me out in Stockholm, they, they get very confused, but also very happy. So it's nice to know that, you know, when that they've got good, that they associate me with fond memories. So that's nice. Yeah. So for that, I definitely do it. Definitely do it. Is there any good comedy shows in Ireland at the moment? Um, well, the last one that I was at was Joanne McNally. Uh, she was absolutely hilarious, to be fair. She's been she's been touring all over Ireland. I'm pretty sure she's like doing Vicar Street right up until November this year. Like, is that Big Mick McNally's ever. niece? So it'd be my <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, fair play show, but is, is there any like comedy shows on TV? Because I haven't really been following it lately. Comedy shows on TV. 
Um, I'm not sure, you know. I haven't I haven't seen any. Not, definitely not in RT anyway. It's all very mm. much doom and gloom, cost of living, Dublin airport. Like just all the bad news coming at you from just every angle with RT. There was a nation so. crying out for a irreverent comedic satire show. It's Ireland. And I know just yeah. the men who can fix that problem. Just need to get the bat phone on and go, yeah, boys, we're ready. I'd definitely come back. So, yeah, that, that just brings us on to our final question and probably the most asked question as well in TikTok comments and Instagram as well. Um, what would the chances be of another series of Hardy Bucks? Because I think the people of Ireland need another series. I think the, the, the chances are very high, definitely. If, um, you know, we just, if someone approaches us and they want, want us to make another series and they've got the they've got the money in the bank then i think the old posse will get together and ride again so i'll be like yeah hardy books re-ride again would be <laughs> i don't know yeah we de- I, I think so i know owen colgan's definitely for it and fair play to the cowboy kelly because he was a mm-hmm. background character for a lot of it and now he's carved himself out a career as well with the three books left splinter group and uh, he's doing very well with the with the live scene so I'm hoping to get a few things sorted here in Stockholm first and then maybe come back and do some live shows with him over the summer. Okay. And we'll see what happens. I've got to have a word with uh, my brother-in-law, Mike, who's the producer. But there is a, there's, there's a, I've been writing new episodes, so we're thinking about maybe launching our own website and just doing things off our website. So we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. But that's going to be independently funded. Yeah. So, a couple of episodes are now in the bank. And I'm doing the the eighth part of the Hardy book, which is an audio book that can be found on the Hardy Books podcast. And it's mm-hmm. very funny. I was listening to it today myself, and I was laughing. And if I was laughing, then that's a good sign, because I'm a cynical yeah. prick. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you so much for your time. Do you have any any final words for for everyone who asked questions today? Or maybe, maybe you could uh, do one of your famous one-liners. He's no more Brian Adams than I am the Stig. Or is it the other way around? Uh, I just want to say to everyone uh, who's supported us and enjoyed the show throughout the years, thanks very much. You mean the world to us. And I would love to get back and, you know, see you live over the next couple of months. And, yeah, look forward to meeting people. And if we can get another show, I'll ring the boys, have a chat. Yeah. So we can get some be a lot of happy people here yeah well I, I think it's long overdue at this stage and, and with all the the doom and gloom of the last couple of years and now with inflation and Dublin airport and all that kind of thing I think people just want to have a good laugh and I think we're the right men to yeah I think I think everything's become very too serious lately and I think we just need a an honest counterbalance to that yeah and that's it comedy it's good for the soul laughter is the best medicine bring the good times back exactly laura and i have to say thanks very much to irish fire you're a great bunch and that little package you sent last year oh mega meanies mcdonald's i should probably mention that you've never tried sing before sing lee Uh, sing lee so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and send you out a couple of them for you to try and uh it's one of one of the doc's finest so yeah, I'll have to come and do a gig that. in Dundalk again. Tell Eamon Bishop I was yeah. asking for him. Eamon Bishop, I will, I will. Uh, who, who are the people on the mug in the background? Uh, who do we have? We have the Derry from Girls. here it looks like um, Tommy Vassal from The Room. Oh, it's the Derry Girls. Oh, yeah. Derry Girls, yeah. Tommy yeah, I mean, got the touch in that for Plato. <laughs> got a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah, is that chef brown good. sauce, is it? Oh, it is, yeah. Delish. Yeah, lovely, lovely. And we have Bally Malou as well. We'll give them a wee shout. Oh, the fancy stuff. The yeah, Allen family. Well, well, wow. Yeah, we'll be yeah. sure to send you some of that as well. Well, do so. I'll have that in my burger and my cheese toasties. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and give this video a big thumbs up below. Uh, to stay up to date on future videos, follow our social media handles, which I'll leave just right here. Cool. And for all your Irish gifting needs, visit irishify.com. See you in the next one.